Good everyone, my name is Graphics. If you look at the front of the screen, you see a diagram there. And diagram shows a beam that is overhanging. And we're told to calculate and find the reaction of this beam. Now, the beam a, B, C, D is carried by two supports. Now you call it a reaction. Whenever you say arrow facing upward, is a what? A reaction. And it has two loads. The arrows facing down are the load. And we want to calculate the reaction, which is caused by this load of 10 kN and 30 kN. Let's see the reaction. And this beam you see here has a span. That is the span means the length of 5.2. That is from A to D is 5.2. Right? So the first thing you do here is to consider the condition for equilibrium first of all. And we have three conditions of equilibrium. We have the summation of H, which is in the same summation of F of X, equals to what? Equals to zero. Meaning that all the forces acting towards the right must be equal to all the forces acting towards the left. Which is in the same, all the horizontal forces should be equal to what? Zero. We also have the next one which is summation of what? F of Y equals to zero, or you say summation of what? Of H of V equals to what? Zero. Meaning all upward force must be equal to what? Downward force. Or you say all vertical component is equal to what? Zero. Now when I say vertical component, it can be facing up, and it can be facing down. They are both vertical components. So your vertical component can be positive and it can be negative. Your horizontal component can be positive and also can be what negative. Then the third one here is summation of moment about a point equals to zero, which means all clockwise moment, all clockwise force must be equal to what anti-clockwise force. That's the key now. Or we we'll say so this is what we have here. So we'll start from the first one. We are saying that what if you look at this system here, right? There is no horizontal component. So I'm not making use of summation of h equals to zero or summation of f of x equals to zero. I'm not using that because there is no horizontal component here out there. So we we'll start from what summation of what v, or we we'll see summation of what f of y equals to what zero now our condition here is we we'll consider upward force to be equals to what positive and downward force to be equals to what negative how together now the upward force here is the reaction facing up that is the, the force carrying the beam how together so the first force is at point b so if you want to write it out, it will be arrow B Y. Arrow B Y means the reaction at point B along Y axis. And the second upward force here we have here is arrow D Y, meaning reaction at point D along Y axis. And there are two of them. And we we'll see upward force will be positive. So I will say arrow B Y plus arrow D Y, right? That is the first two facing up. And we have another two facing down. Any one facing down is a load. And any load that is in form of an arrow this way is called what? A point load. So we have two load. And we we'll see whenever the force is, the arrow is facing down, right? We we'll say it is what? Negative. So the first arrow facing down is 10 Newton. Facing down meaning minus 10. The second one is what? 30 Newton. Facing down means minus 30. Equals to what? Equals to zero. Understand? Now you call it like times minus arrow by plus arrow dy 
will now be equals to now we have minus 10 minus 30 will give you minus 40 when minus 40 come to the other side of the equal sign it becomes positive and that becomes what 40 newton i will call that my equation one why is it my equation one because i have more than one unknown i don't know arrow by and i don't know arrow dy if i only have one unknown now it will not be an equation i will together now we we'll move forward to the next condition which is summation of moment about a point now in this area you can actually use either point b or point d all these make use of the reaction right to make your work easier so use either point b or point d but for this video i'll be making use of what point b so i'll see summation of moment about b is equal to what zero so my condition here is consider that the clockwise moment should be positive and the clockwise moment should be what negative i will together now so we move forward now when you say moment what is moment moment is the period of force and what perpendicular distance now if i take moment about point b right it means that point b will become zero will be that will be nothing other than a reference point we will not see whatever is in that point b what we'll just see will be a reference point right so if you look at we have um we have from a to b is 1.2 the distance from b to d is four point and in four meter then from the first load 10 kilometers to the second load 30 kilometers is another is um, two meter what is important here is i want to know the distance between point b and c to so more easier that way so what will i do now what you simply do here is if you add 1.2 meter plus 4 meter you'll be having 5.2 now when you subtract it from 2 you will be having what you will be having what 3.2 meaning that from c to d is what 3.2 meter all together now now what you do here is um what you're going to do here is 3.2 now subtract 3.2 from 4 you have the distance between b and d all good so 3.2 from 4 will give you what 0 0.8 so distance between b and c is what 0 0.8 just mark that because you need distance in order to calculate for moment so let's take the first one the first one we'll be considering will be the force you only consider the force so i have 10 newton facing downward at point a and i'm taking moment at point b so moment is the force what force that force 10 newton multiplied by the distance perpendicular distance which is 1.2 to the point of action the point of action is where you take moment and that is b that is the reference point and that force you're seeing multiplied by the 1.2 and it's negative because it is moving in this manner we will talk about clockwise and clockwise so when something goes like this it's going opposite the clock direction so you call it anti-clockwise right so it is negative so minus 10 times 1.2 that's the first one plus we have 30 look at the 30 facing downward but that is the point that is where the force is acting right then the distance between where the force is acting to the point of what where you take your moment which is b is 0 0.8 so 30 times 0 0.8 is positive because if you look at the arrow it's going in a clockwise direction all right plus the other force again is arrow dy facing upward so the force is going in this direction to where you take moment which is what b so we are going in an anti-clockwise direction you can see that in this manner to b so whatever you are doing we're going towards where you take moment which is b if I have take moment at D, everything will be going towards D. Is that taking now? So we're moving towards B. 
So it will be uh, minus R O D Y times 4 because the distance between from D to B is 4 meter. So everything equals to 0. So minus 10 times 1.2 is minus 12 plus 30 times 0 0.8 is 24 minus 4 R O D Y equals to 0. So minus 12 plus 24 will give you 12 minus 4 R O D Y equals to 0. So 4 R O um, 12 will not be equal to 4 R O D Y. When 4 R O D Y go to the other side, it become positive. I will together now. So if you make R O D Y sort of the formula, R O D Y will not be equal to 12 over 4, and that will be equal to what? 3 newton. So that is 3 newton. And if you have to convert 3 newton to kilogram, you're going to divide by the gravity, right? And what is the gravity giving? 9.81. So 3.81 by 9.81 will give us 0 0.31 kilogram. You might say, are, we, are you with me? So go to the next one. Substitute RODY into equation 1. Because we already have equation 1, RODY plus RODY equals to 4 T Newton. Right? So since I already have my RODY, I'll just put it in that equation 1. So it will now be RODY plus 3 is equals to 40 because RODY is 3. So RODY will now be equals to 40 minus 3 when it is going to the other side become negative. So my RODY will now become 37 Newton. So when you see divide this by 9.81, you'll be having 3.78 kilogram, right? So this is what we have. So if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and also share the video. Thanks for watching.